to suddenly you're, um, you're flying to several routes, you're a big player, you've challenged uh, Aer Lingus and British Airways in terms of routes and so on. What's, what's that journey like when you're, going, uh, when you're going through that? What was that, was that whole period of time like? First of all, we started operating domestically, <coughs> excuse me, uh, within the within the UK from London to uh, Presswick in, in, in Scotland. Uh, and then deregulation came in, which was about 10 years later than in the States, uh, where we were allowed to fly, you know, within, within, certainly within the European Union, um, without any, any restrictions. So then we started operating into France and Germany and Italy. Um, and these people had all been denied low fares. And, you know, the flights were full, people couldn't get more, but we just doubled the flights, we got more airplanes. Um, and at that stage, it, it's, it'd be hard to say how far you were going to go. Um, I remember from, you know, in the first year in Ryanair, we carried 10,000 passengers. Now we carry like 100,000 a day. And, and suddenly it started to grow. We started to get the airplanes. Uh, and we just kept on with that, that particular model. Uh, and it worked. And we started to make profits. Uh, we started to get, you know, more airplanes. Uh, and continue the expansion into Europe. I know it was uh, uh, Tony's vision and he wanted you to help on the logistics right. side. Tell us a little bit about what that's like, because I know that lots of people have all sorts of emotions about running businesses with family members. I think it worked really fine because uh, I continued to, to learn from, like everybody else, to uh, see, see how you could do things. Uh, and one of the things I think it gave, a lot, certainly a lot of people in Ireland, it gave confidence, which is a huge asset, uh, that you could do things, that you might be living on a small island of three million people, uh, but you're now a big player on, on the global scene. Mm. Um, and that's why I said he was a visionary and he could see way out uh, as to what could be done. Can you give us a little bit of a picture of what it is like running that kind of a business, a, a, a day in the life of, of, of that kind of a, a business. There must be so many factors. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very complex business, aviation anyway, uh, and it's probably the most highly regulated industry on the planet. You know, you have the Department of Transport, you've got the CAA, you've got all sorts of rules, uh, you've got to operate with all sorts of uh, procedures. Um, everybody really has to know what they're doing and everybody has a, their, their, their place to fit in. Uh, and you have to try to get a, to work like clockwork because the airplanes you know, don't make money when they're sitting on the ground. Uh, and that's why Ryanair, the time on the ground is like 25 minutes, uh, which is quite a fee for 189 passengers. <clears throat> and if it's running late, it has to be done in, in like 20 minutes. But people are quite skilled. Uh, I think they're all very professional uh, and, and they know what they have to do. Like in the case of Ryanair, we don't carry cargo, for example, we don't carry mail. Uh, we try to reduce the number of bags, I'm sure some of you have experienced that. Um, but we fly these modern 737 aircraft, which are very, very reliable. Um, so the turnarounds are quick, um, and a lot of the fuss has gone out of it. You know, uh, like the cabin staff clean the airplane, for example, which is a big benefit. We don't have cleaners. So if somebody applies for a job in, uh, in Ryanair, they're not going to meet celebrities or movie stars, they're going to meet a brush at the end of the flight. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I want to talk a little bit about the growth stage of the business. And Isabel mentioned that here at the British Library, there's a program called Innovating for Growth, partly because the growth stage for any business is so, so challenging. The starts off, there's just one or a handful of you um, and you're wanting to grow, and the question is, how are you going to do that growth? Are you going to fund it through family, through friends? Are you going to go to the banks and so on? When you're dealing like in a business like yours, funding isn't cheap. Airplanes don't come cheap. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about what the rationale and what the thinking was in terms of Ryanair and how you dealt with those challenges? And I'd imagine from that first moment when you've got one plane, to even think about the next one, you're talking about a huge sum of money. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that? Well, you're talking really, really big sums now. I mean, uh, they just put an order in for 200 737 MAX, uh, 200 series aircraft, uh, which are the very latest uh, 737s. 
Uh, but that order was $22 billion. I mean, it, it's huge. Um, but they, they buy the airplanes. They don't actually lease the airplanes. Uh, and they do it through the import-export bank. But the thing is, because they buy so many Boeings, they get really good deals. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll see that this a little bit because cause not many of us have got a few. I, uh, I mean, yeah. really, really good deals. <laughs> Uh, and after five or six years, the earlier airplanes are, are leased or sold on. Right. And uh, the company probably gets more for those aircraft than what they paid for them. But in the, in the, but in the early yeah. days, in terms of um, what, what was the, how was it that you wanted to grow? I, I, presumably, there's, there's, there's no option in a business like that, that to go out and get major financial backing. Tell us a little bit about that. And is that, was that kind of tricky, especially uh, handling those kind of negotiations? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, they got the money and then they done a large flotation in, in 87, uh, which was very, very successful. It was three times oversubscribed. Um, and they had built up money. I mean, they, you know, they were making profits. Uh, right today, they have a war chest of nearly three billion euros. You know, so they can do things and, and they, they can afford to do it. Uh, but but it's, it's a gradual step. Uh, and you really have to establish yourself on the ground to know how far you can go. Um, and you can't be like Napoleon on his way to Moscow. He, his train was you know, left behind. Uh, and the growth has to be planned, even though Ryanair might decide to operate 20, flight, 20 new routes. Each one of those routes is really, you know, checked out and it's going to work and stuff like that. Um, and right now, it's really done on volume. The numbers increase, uh, but the number of staff, it doesn't, it stays kind of constant. Um, like next year, they'll carry 84 million passengers. I mean, that's three times probably bigger than British Airways. Certainly bigger than British Airways and EasyJet combined. Uh, but one of the things, you know, <coughs> the company actually says, I mean, O'Leary says it, you know, providing we don't believe our own bull, the airline will be successful. So even though I said it's big, you've got to keep your feet on the ground, uh, you know, and your planes in the air and, and, and know what you're doing. Well, you know, this is extraordinary. But you you yeah. get credibility. I think that's the other thing, that people come to you and say, would you like to buy, go, buy our airplanes? We developed a culture which is very hard to do. I don't know how you do it, to be honest with you. I think it's just something that grows organically or whatever. Southwest Airlines have it in bucket loads. Um, and it, it's something within the company that happens. And when you've got it, it's a really powerful weapon. Um, but one of the things people are told, you know, running it is serious, but it's not serious when you can f figure the stuff that's happening around the world today. Um, mm. So they're told, do your job, and, but have some fun when you're doing it because you'll spend a lot of time working. Mm. Um, and I think the, the staff do that. They think every day is a challenge, but, but they like what they do. And they, they all have share option schemes, which I haven't mentioned. Um, so they're part of the company. Mm. Every five years, these shares, um, if the company's doing well, they come to fruition. And the average payout is about 35,000 euro to each staff member. So they, they feel connected to the company. And also, if they want to go off somewhere else, then there's no better learning ground mm. because they work very hard. They're well paid. Um, and I think they, they enjoy that the challenge of, of um, you know, maybe taking on the big boys. But we are the big boys now, so we gotta be careful as well. <laughs>